two o'clock. Okay, Gabby, I'm coming over here. And for those of you viewing, welcome to this edition of Coffee with Tyler. I'm joined by two of your neighbors here in Bradford Terrace, but if you're viewing this, feel free to come on down. Um, I'll answer any questions you may have. And when I say two, I mean we actually have three, as we have one four-legged friend <laughs> in uh, Augie Mortar Owl's dog, Gabby, and of course Nancy Bolander's here as well. So, um, with that, I'll open it up. What questions, what uh, concerns, what uh, ideas do you have for me? Well, you already told me that all the rentals are gone now. Mm -hmm. Okay. The question for those of you viewing uh, were that uh, Nancy Wilner asked, were all the renter, were rental units uh, right. and Bradford Terrace and Water Tower residents uh, uh, gone? And so they have all transitioned out of the community at this point. And so with that, um, you know, from what I've heard, they're all doing very well. So. Did you talk to Anna and find out um, what program was at CBS on Saturday? Uh, I had a little overview about from East Castle and what we were doing here. So the question was, there was a program that's out there from, from what a few of you have mentioned about what East Castle Place is doing. We reached out to our PR firm and, and we can't confirm that story. Uh, or where it was from or where it was viewed. Does anybody know what's being? Fiona saw it. Fiona saw it? Okay. Yeah. Well, I need to circle back with her because we don't have any record of that. Good. And I know that I was not interviewed by any of the news outlets. Um, again, I know that we've had press releases and things of that nature that have been picked up, um, mm -hmm. but haven't seen anything okay. as of late. Thank you. So. The only news that we have had is is from WTMJ4 and Spectrum 1, and that was the story on the Bucks and the Suns. Right, so. right, and that was great. Yeah. What kind of no. beer are we getting? The question was, what kind of beer did we win? <laughs> and great when? question. Um, so, and when, right? So, we will be receiving uh, about 10, 10 or so cases, 10 or, 12, 10 or so 12 packs. Uh, it's called Four Peaks Brewery based in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, it's called Kilt Lifter. It is an amber style beer. Um, I used to live in Phoenix, and so I, I had the opportunity to have some Four Peaks brews. It's very good. Um, not necessarily as good as Spotted Cow by any means, but um, I'm, I reached out to the executive director. He is actually personally delivering it um, since they can't necessarily get it over the border. Um, so, um, it will be at sometime in August, and so we'll put that on the calendar. We'll do another buck celebration. So, absolutely. What do you have to tell us? Well, is there any other questions? Otherwise, a um, couple things. Uh, yeah. Then I do have a question. Yeah. I've been scouting for somebody to uh, run the movies on nights when I cannot. Yeah. And one of those came up suddenly. Okay. Uh, the second Sunday in August might be one that I can't, I mean the Saturday. Uh, second Saturday in August I might not be able to do it. Okay. And I don't I know of anybody that can do it uh, that's not our, on staff. I mean, mm -hmm. we wouldn't want to ask them to come for a night um, I don't even know if they'd respond, but anyways, um, I'm looking for another person to run the movie once in a while when I okay. can't do it. All right, so uh, the request from Augie was um, to have a, uh, do I call it a compadre, a friend, a neighbor, that may also want to partake in running the movies that we do on Wednesday nights and Saturday nights. Yep. Um, as Augie is looking like he may have a commitment on the second Saturday of August. And so let me also think on that. Um, and maybe there is directions that we can provide 
that we could leave and make it as simple as possible um, for anybody that's there to be able to start movies. And then maybe alleviate and be a long-term solution, but at the same time, um, I know that there's oftentimes some troubleshooting that has to happen. So let me, uh, let me work with uh, whether that's Scott, Cooper, our IT folks, um, uh, on some directions for movies. I have done some understudying, but uh, it's frequently ended up being somewhat confusing. <laughs> yeah. So the comment was made, it's, you know, I've, I've gone through it once or twice, but it still ends up being kind of confusing and each time a little different. Is that kind of right, Alex? Well, Augie, is that the description? It's a good description because it, it's, um, it's a, uh, there are five channels that we can use uh, for live streaming. And then of course there's the running the, of the yeah. discs. Yeah, I'm just wondering if we can't have that pre-set up on Friday, you know, when staff members are here. We generally don't touch the TV until, you know, Saturday when it when the movies are running. We usually don't have programming on between that. Right. And uh, w let me see what I can do. All right. But in the meantime, the request still stands. We'd love for some additional residents to partake in, in some of the movies and and uh, viewing of them um, and also playing of them. Is that fair? Okay. So now the question was, uh, what do I have to share with you? And so a um, couple of updates. So I mentioned in State of the Castle uh, last week that there's gonna be some work going on by the gazebo area. How many of you have seen that work that's been done. Mm -hmm. A lot of, little bit more dramatic than maybe some or most of us thought. And so um, I, I want the, you to know that that decision was made um, because KEI, our former landscaping company that does work at the Catholic Home, that's their profession. We, uh, Eric, myself, um, and, and did a walk uh, around the perimeter as we were preparing to transition services. And KEI looked and Eric and I asked, I said, you know, what can we do for this corner? A, to, to brighten it up, but B, to, to make it more beautiful. Um, and the comment was made from Nate, um, our KEI representative that, again, is knowledgeable. Uh, this is his profession. He said, well, Tyler, Eric, those, those trees have actually outlived um, you know, most of their useful life, um, and we could prune, but the majority of the trees are dead. Um, and so he came with a proposal, and so the proposal um, that KEI is fulfilling that I signed off on um, was essentially a, uh, a tiered type of system. And I'm, it's gonna be tough to explain, and I can't wait for it to be in full um, completion. And then we'll we'll see what comments are had. But essentially, there will be some, uh, for lack of a better term, some arbovitas. And again, this is my recollection: some arbovitas that will kind of be in the center of that corner. And then from there, we'll tear down on both sides. So again, there will be screening for East Castle Place. And then on the East Castle Place side, there will be a similar, um, you know, think of it as I kind of think of it as six foot, three foot, one foot, right? Yeah, your six foot screen of arborvitas, then you have a three foot section of, of other um, perennials, and then you may have some annuals to round out the East Castle side. Places for the birds? Right, because um, that was brought up as well, places for the birds. And so again, um, yes, there will be places for the birds and the arborvitas. Um, and then I know, um, you know, we. what else can we do from, from planting? Um, trees and things of that nature. So um, again, it was made, a uh, decision um, was made for for us by myself. So again, um, you know, hindsight 2020 um, could have been better in communicating with you uh, as residents, um, but at the same time um, felt the need to, to move on a situation of something that 
wasn't necessarily enhancing the appearance of our beautiful campus. So if there's questions, concerns, you know, um, you can come talk to me. Um, but I ask also for some patience and understanding. KEI will continue to water and make sure that those plants continue to grow. There is irrigation that will be set up for them and the plants are warrantied. So again, um, we will go forward in that direction. Uh, is there going to be some screening from the street then? Yes. There will be screen, screening from the street, absolutely. Well, because, because that was apparently completely removed. Correct. If you walk around the corner, it was completely removed as there's stumps right now. Will it be a fence? No, it'll be with the larger arbovitas. And again, there's gotta be some growth, but there will be screening. Okay. I noticed that they've been putting in a lot of flowers today. There should be some perennials um, that will blossom throughout the summer and fall. And then um, there will be some annuals that we'll have to plant annually. Are they rabbit proof? I do not know. I assume, <laughs> you know, there will be some rabbit proof flowers. Because the rabbits are very active. I know. They are at my house as well. Any other questions on that? Okay. Um, the other thing I'm sure uh, is that I also mentioned at State of the Castle was COVID-19. Um, and just kind of what we're seeing across the nation with especially the Delta variant. Um, and then obviously what we're seeing here at East Castle Place in, in Milwaukee. Um, you know, there at this time, there is a necessity to change any of the protocols, both visitor as well as mask protocols for you as residents. Um, we are working through the health center right now in, in working with Wisconsin DHS um, on, on any protocols that we need to change. Um, but again, that's something that we will continue to monitor very closely and that I'll continue to, to communicate with you as residents. Um, you will be receiving a memo just kind of updating you on where we stand as a community um, since it has been a topic that's come up more recently. So, uh, is there a significant proportion of the employees who are not vaccinated? We're roughly around the 63% mark of vaccinated employees, um, so 37%, give or take, are not vaccinated. Um, the question for those of you that are viewing, uh, were what is the vaccination rate of our employees or something of that nature? Um, and that's where we have roughly 63% of the employees vaccinated. Um, again, there's been discussion about mandating it. Um, and I think that that will further come from the CDC and the government um, on whether that's a blanket that, that they're gonna put over healthcare. Um, I think that's to be determined yet. So I think Columbia St. Mary's at this point still has not mandated it. Um, I think the hospital systems will, will lead this um, proponent, so to speak. Um, but I think we as a healthcare profession um, are very interested and active in that conversation as well. What kind of justification for not vaccinating does a healthcare worker have? because it has not received the formal approval from it being in a non-emergency response. And I don't know if I'm saying that right, Alex, and I can get that language, but again, because it's still in that emergency authorization, that's where that mandation has not come across. So I, I can tell you that, I mean, the education that we continue to do with employees that are unvaccinated, continue. We have the Johnson & Johnson shot available for employees. Um, What's their reasoning? It spreads the gamut of- It's my privilege, right? It's my, it's my right to not get it. Um, it's, you know, 
still too early. Um, again, it, even if I do get vaccinated, I could still get COVID. Um, and again, to that point, we're seeing it. I'm sure you've seen it too. That individuals that have been vaccinated may receive, may still contract COVID. I can tell you that the effects are much, much less uh, for those that are vaccinated versus those that are not, just from what I've been seeing and reading. Um, but it primarily comes back to it's my right, and mm-hmm. you know I, I don't necessarily trust the vaccination mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. or the science. Thank so you. again, that that's not my opinion. Those are opinions of of again outside of East Castle walls as well. Um, I think it's, um, it spreads the gamut. So again, the question was what's the what's the justification for not receiving? Um, vaccination so the one time you said that perhaps the people who have been vaccinated would not have to wear masks mm-hmm. is that still a thought the workers it is um, but right now it is not um, again it's still and we take the guidance from the Wisconsin Department of Health the Wisconsin Department of Health actually um, has mandated that our staff in the health center and CBRF are in eye goggles uh, or eye protection as well. Um, and so again, they just say that you're dealing with a vulnerable population and that you need to protect them as much as you need to protect yourself. So, um, and again, that's a blanket that I'm putting over the campus for the protection of, of all the employees as well as the residents, but also um, just wanting to um, not have to have the the micromanagement of staff members saying, are you vaccinated, Nancy? Okay, you don't have to wear your mask. Augie, I know you're vaccinated. You can wear your mask. Alex, I, are you vaccinated or are you not? So again, it's just... It's a giveaway. It is, to a degree, but it's also, I mean, there's parameters in, in, order, in order to make uh, it stick, so to speak, so... What other, what other questions, comments, concerns? What do you have? Well, those are my two big ones for today. Um, we're continuing to move along um, in the development plans. Um, we have 20 individuals signed up um, from a priority agreement standpoint for the new apartments. Um, and we continue to work with our partners. Um, at CG Schmidt, RDG, um, Interior Designs, and AG Architects. So again, the timeline is still tentatively in April um, that may get pushed slightly just due to some city approvals and different permits and things of that nature. Um, But all in all, the conversations continue. Um, We're very optimistic um, and, and excited. Well, what's the difference in these new apartments? What's the advantage that people are signing up for them? So the question was, what's the advantage? What is mm-hmm. the, uh, what was the other comment you made? What's the advantage? What's the? Why they're signing up? Are they bigger, cheaper? Why, yeah. Um, and why are they signing up? Why would right. somebody, because residents love East Castle Place, uh, but they're not quite ready. Um, that's one reason maybe. Um, the distinction really is no different than what you currently have. The price points are going to be higher um, because they're new from an entrance fee standpoint. The monthly service fee is going to be in line with what you are currently paying. Um, You know, it is going to be based on square footage. So the larger your apartment, the more you will pay. Your healthcare and life care benefit will, or your healthcare benefit will be the same, 60 months. Um, So really it's just an opportunity to be a part of East Castle Place that Maybe the, the current apartment that you want isn't available, or maybe you're like, ah, you know what, in two years, maybe I will be ready for East Castle Place. Maybe they're currently on the wait list and they said, you know what, I'm still not ready uh, to move into East Castle Place. And so sure, go ahead and put me on the priority wait list as well. Are any of the residents here interested in moving? Um, the question was, is there any residents that are interested, mm-hmm. uh, currently, current residents? Um, to that, um, I will say I have not been approached by any residents, um, at this time. 
Um, obviously, a, a lot of you, um, much like myself, haven't seen you know the square footages, what the apartment layouts are going to be, what are some of the mm -hmm. unique features of them. We may gain some interest from that, but again, um, there's going to be an entrance fee difference, most likely, um, for any residents that move in that that they'll be accountable for. Mm -hmm. um, but again. If that's a conversation and you have interest, by all means, let myself, let Anna, let Heidi know, um, and we'll definitely uh, have that discussion. Um, you as residents kind of have that priority status already, obviously, um, but again, that's that's where the interest is. Um, so, I had heard uh, undocumented references that there were a number of current uh, residents here who have uh, put their name on the list. Is that not the case? I guess the undocumented piece is kind of what I would point to. Um, I, I may not be aware of those conversations. I know in passing a few residents have said, oh yeah, I may be interested, um, but I'm not necessarily, not that they're not important and not that they don't matter. But uh, again, as those conversations come up, by all means, um, I, I'm happy to have those and, and formalize what that would look like. Um, again, from a priority standpoint, um, there is a timetable that you have to commit to a, to an apartment. Um, so again, there's some factors in there, yeah. but by all means, uh, I'll entertain those questions and, and comments and kind of what that looks like. So, okay, perfect. so what else? I'm trying to think. I, I mean, it's been hot. There's no doubt about that. So. I hope we're all staying hydrated. I hope if you do go out for walks with your pets or out, um, please do make sure that, you know, um, you are staying hydrated. And if you're not feeling well, do let Teresa know so that we can make sure we provide you the appropriate support. Um, and again, we're, we're excited to, to continue moving forward. Um, we do have a resident satisfaction survey upcoming, so look for more information regarding that. Um, and, and kind of where we were in 2019 to where we, we are today and kind of where where we see ourselves as a community, that, that information is very important to us. Uh, we utilize that information on how we move forward from programming, from different levels of services we provide, so on and so forth. Um, and yeah, uh, that's about it, you know. Okay, thank you. I guess, I, I guess if there's any questions uh, from the viewers that are watching, you know where I am. Um, and I'm always happy to chat with you one-on-one, -on -one, always happy to, to answer and ease, hopefully, any concerns that you have and look forward to obviously your engagement and your input um, as to where we continue to progress. So thank you, appreciate everybody. Thank you to those that are watching. Take care and we'll see you next time. All right.